Christmas. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you indeed have come to us. Thank you, Lord, as we again just stop and pause and celebrate and give thanks. The joy of your birth, the joy of gathering, the joy of just stopping maybe for a moment just now and remembering all that you have done for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we just want to lift up in prayer a Les today, Lord. Thank you that his op went well. And Father God, as he continues to heal and recuperate, Father, we pray that you be with him and Coral and doctors and nurses and the, the Lord, all the skin graft and everything went well. Father, we just pray your, your healing hand upon him. We think of Roger today, who's unwell with the flu, but Lord, we just want to lift up a prayer for his father-in-law, Derek, uh, in England, not well at all, and father in hospital, and may only have weeks or days left, Father, and you know that situation, and he asked us to pray. So God, hear our prayers for Derek, Roger's uh, father-in-law in England, Lord, and we know it's tough there. Uh, thank you that, that you indeed, Lord, your hand of mercy and grace will be upon him. Sad news this morning, uh, John and Joan got broke into overnight, Lord, but God, we thank you that you protected them and watched over them. Even though some things were taken, scary, unsettling, unnerving, that someone has been in your house, violated, Lord, but Father God, we thank you that you indeed watched over them and protected them in their bed, Father God, and, and there wasn't any confrontation, Lord, and so we thank you. Now, may these things be found and the people found, Lord, and swiftly we pray for that. There's some coral too, broken, uh, door broken and into as well during the week. And Father, we, we just pray that there are times unsettling things and unsettling times, Lord. And we pray for your protection upon our homes, upon our marriages, upon our relationships, upon our church, as we too have suffered a loss uh, recently of, of a mower and some other things, Lord God. And so we pray a, a hedge of protection around our homes and our church and our community in, in Jesus' name as people seek to steal and, and take things that aren't theirs, Father God, we just pray that you indeed guide us in all those things. Father, we think of our nation, we, uh, we're concerned with, the, with outbreaks in New South Wales and border shuttings and people no doubt halfway between or stuck here or stuck there and so Lord God, we pray that we continue to be vigilant. Uh, the coronavirus is still very real and so Lord, we pray that wisdom and uh, will be made and people will be tested and, and healing will come and, and solutions will come, Lord God, as, as vaccines are being made and tested and processed, Father God. So we just leave all that in, in your hands, we pray, that you are a God who indeed heals and guides. But Father, we thank you that we can celebrate your Son, Jesus. How can this be? Here we are once again, but we are here, our ears are open, our hearts are receptive to hear your word. So, Father God, we thank you that you indeed will minister to us through these words of Scripture, through these thoughts that you place on my heart. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's Luke. It's Luke chapter 1, 26 to 38. My message is titled, How Can This Be? It is the sixth month. In the sixth month, of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. And he will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever and ever, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the, one, so the Holy One to be born will be called 
the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her own day and age. Shock, horror! And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. No word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary Anderson. May your words to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. It's always great to bring a Christian message. It's always great to bring a Christmas message. This young woman, Mary, unmarried, that can help us all once again understand God's favour towards you, God's favour towards me, for God understands what is possible. God understands where our peace and hope lie. As we take another look at life with godly perspective today. Let's do that. What do we know of Mary? Well, scholars suggest that sort of marital age for a woman in the first century Palestine was anywhere around 12, 13, 14, around that sort of age. While Joseph was the descendant of David, Mary's family is not, not mentioned here. Why is she worthy or deserving of a divine encounter? Now she's facing pregnancy as an unmarried woman. We all recognise what that will do for her status and her situation in her community. How can it be? Mary faced her unplanned pregnancy, living under Roman occupation, and now facing marriage. A lot was going on for this young couple. And I'm sure she had many questions. I'm sure she had many worries and concerns, as did Joseph, as they faced the unknown together. But she was an important part of God's unfolding plan. She too was a child of God. Through life we build up an understanding of who we are and, and our worth based on at times how others have treated us. So Mary is approached by Gabriel, who informs her of God's plan. Her internal response is, how? How? What? How, how can this be? What are you saying? What, what is going on here? Here am I. And an encounter with an angel, but she found favour with God. And she would have a child, and he would be the son of God. How can this be? Will people still accept me? Will people still love me? How can this be? What is my place now in this world? But Mary takes another look at herself, at this promise, these promises of God, and what part she can now play in it. She would be the mother of the Son of God. Jesus, Messiah, the Christ, Emmanuel. And here we are. 2020. 2020 years later. Celebrating, remembering, rejoicing the gift of God. Coming into the world. Once again. Mary was committed and Mary was vital to Jesus accomplishing his role and his mission. Friends, most of us have said yes to being parents. We've committed to that, to that love and to that care. But that love is not only for those of the same bloodline. Maybe you today have had a significant role in those children in your extended family or those outside your family. Or maybe you've been a mother or an auntie or a friend to a child who needed some hope and love 
but you had none yourself. The children who were not your biological children. I'm thankful for the many people who have been part of our children's lives and still to this day, dotted around Australia, important to adults in children's lives. As we walk in the steps, these steps, Mary spoke these words on the screen there. Let it be to me as you have said. Let it be to me as you have said, Mary spoke out. This lowly child with no status in her society had the highest honour, had God's favour upon her, a central role in the salvation of the world. That is the good news of Christmas. That is the good news every day for us. But God has the final say on our worth. How can this be? 1 John 4, verse 4 for us. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Maybe through life there's been lots of criticism, lots of comments, lots of concern. But you, dear child, are from God. And we can overcome them. But God is in us. If you're a follower of Christ, you are worthy, you are called, you are set apart. You are significant in His plan today. Who will you listen to? The voices of negativity? Or the voice of hope and peace and truth and love? Listen to God Almighty. His words bring peace. His words bring hope and a clear perspective. How can this be? 1 John 4, 6. We are from God. And whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This Christmas season, speak out God's words of hope. Speak out God's words of peace in Jesus' name. You might be a little bit unsure like Mary or troubled like Joseph. But the good news is that God will not leave you wondering. God does not leave us wondering. And this morning we have this table here. God did not leave us wondering. He didn't leave us wondering about his birth. He didn't leave us wondering about his death. He didn't leave us wondering about his resurrection. He didn't leave us wondering about the gift of his spirit upon us. And so today, we come and share in a communion time. And we bow and give thanks for bread and wine. Let's do that. Lord God, I thank you that you have not left us wondering. And here we have these simple emblems before us. The bread symbolizing your body that was broken. The cup symbolizing your blood that was spilled upon the cross for us. Lord Jesus, we pause now. Hear our prayers of confession. Hear our prayers of hope. Hear our prayers of praise.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, that as we take the bread and we take the cup and we eat and drink, that you will bless it, that you will be our sustainer, that you will not leave us wondering, for we have heard your words of truth. We know your gift of salvation, and we receive that, and we honour that, and we celebrate that today, for you have called us to be your people, people of worth, people of godly perspective, in Jesus' name, amen. If the helpers could come forward and distribute the bread and the cup today, that would be wonderful. Take a piece of bread and eat it, hold the cup.